When I was a kid growing up in the 1970s, disaster movies were a thing. They were very popular. There was Airport, and there was Airport 77, and uh, The Towering Inferno, and Earthquake. But of all those movies, my favorite one was The Poseidon Adventure with Gene Hackman and Shelley Winters, and Leslie Nielsen was in it for a bit, and Ernest Borgnine and others. Now, I know they made a new version of it, but I'm a loyalist. I really like the movies that I saw as a kid, and so that's my favorite version. Now, the movie is simple. They're on a cruise ship, and while they're on the cruise ship on New Year's Eve, an enormous tidal wave strikes the ship and flips the ship upside down in the water. Now, many people die, of course, but many people don't, and those that are in the ballroom are trying to just get their bearings, you know, once everything stops moving. And they begin to realize that everything that was down is now up, and everything that was up is now down, and, and they're trying to decide what to do. And the purser on the ship, he says, everybody stay here, they're going to come and get us. And the preacher, played by Gene Hackman, Mr. Scott, says, no, we need to go up and out to safety. And Mr. Scott is a preacher, and he's kind of raw. He says some bad words and cuss words and stuff, but he is a leader, and he's trying to lead people to life. And so eventually, a very small group makes it to the next deck, and they follow the preacher as he leads them up to the propeller shaft where the steel is uh, the thinnest and they can maybe be saved. Well, when they're right at the propeller shaft, the ship lists in the water because there's an enormous explosion and this pipe breaks free and steam covers the doorway where that they need to use to get through and to the propeller shaft. And Mr. Scott kind of yells at God in an angry tone, you know, but he does this dramatic thing. He leaps off the platform and grabs this valve and slowly but surely with every ounce of energy he's got, he he moves this valve and slowly and shuts the valve and turns off the steam. But the problem is he can't get back to the platform. Too far of a leap and he wouldn't have the energy to do it even if he could. And so he tells Mr. Rogo, played by Ernest Borgnine, to get them through. And with that, he lets go and gives himself up for the group. And that way, he was a sacrifice. He became like Jesus. He gave up his life so they could have life. He made a way where there was no way. And that's exactly what Jesus did for you and for me. Jesus also made a very specific claim about what he did and about his life. He said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Now, the apostles believed that. Those who lived with him and walked with him and saw him rise from the grave, they, they believed it. And they spent the rest of their life sharing the good news of the gospel. And almost all of them were martyred. And they weren't martyred because they said that Jesus was a God, but because they said Jesus was the only God. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Peter said, there is no other name given to men under heaven by which we must be saved, only the name of Jesus. And you won't get in trouble in 2023 saying that Jesus was God, probably, or a God. But you will get in trouble when you say he's the only God and he's the only way. People don't like to hear that Jesus is the only way. But that's true. That is the defining truth about who Jesus is. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father, goes to heaven, except through him. You know, it just doesn't make any sense that if there was another way that Jesus would give his life on the cross. Why would he do that? That, to me, doesn't make any sense. That would be a foolish thing to do, to give up your life when there was another way to God. But Jesus is the only way. And what made him uniquely qualified to do what he did was that he lived a perfect life sinless life. He was fully God and fully man. Not 50% God and 50% man. He was 100% God, 100% man, and yet he never sinned. He did everything that we do, but he never sinned, not even any deceit. He never even told a lie, the apostle Peter said. You know what's unique is I liked how R.C. Sproul wrote about this. He said this, he said, Moses could mediate the law. Muhammad could brandish the sword. Buddha could give personal counsel. Confucius could offer wise sayings, but none of these men was qualified to offer an atonement for the sins of the world. Jesus alone is qualified.
and he's right. Jesus is the way, he's the only way. So my appeal to you today is to realize that God did create a way for you to be with him. And he's inviting you to follow him in that way. But that way is Jesus. The apostle Paul said that if you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, that he is God's son, that he was raised from the dead, you will be saved. Now I wanna encourage you, if that's true and you believe that, to not waste any more time looking for other options. Jesus is the way. And if you want to, I encourage you to reach out to me at pavementpotholes at gmail.com and I will help you know how to make the next steps. No matter where you are in the country, I'll encourage you to find a good Bible-believing, Jesus-loving church and help you in those next steps that you need in order to be a true Christ follower. You know, because Jesus is the way, he's kind of like our GPS and I remember a time, as too many of you, when we didn't have GPS. And boy, that was a painful time, right? We had to look at maps and had to stop and ask directions. Now we just plug it in our phone and we go. But you know what's even better than that? Is if you're going to go somewhere with somebody and they say, oh, I'll take you there. I've been there a hundred times. Well, that's like Jesus. He came from heaven and he said, you know the way to the place where I'm going. And he said, I am the way. And so all we have to do is follow him. And when we follow him, he'll lead us right to the Father. God bless you. Start walking with him or keep walking with him. And I'll do the same thing. And if you want to reach out to me, I'll help you take those next steps. And I'll see you next week. God bless you.